What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 29th of January in 2019, as well as taking a look at Apple's earnings, guys. Apple is the company that we've been waiting for over the past couple of weeks to report their earnings, and they are finally here. We're going to be taking a look at some nitty-gritty numbers, so stay tuned. In the next couple of minutes, we'll get into that, and of course, we're going to be talking about some other stocks, some other ETFs that did very well today. So before we do get into all of this, Feel free to smash that like button if you guys do enjoy and find value in the content and really does help my channel grow. And I do appreciate you guys to the fullest if you do smash that like button. So let's get into it, guys. Without further ado, starting off here with the SPX, also known as the S&P 500. The 500 largest U.S. companies are right here, guys. And we can see... You know, at the close of the market today, not too crazy of movement in terms of the three major indices, right? The SPX was down around 0.15%, down around $4. The Dow Jones was down around, or up around $51, rather, up around 0.2% on the day. And the NASDAQ, guys, you can clearly see it's up the highest right now. These are the futures that are currently still moving. And with Apple stock flying up at the close of the market, Market. This is obviously pushing up the NASDAQ futures and we can see these are currently up around 56 points up around 0.84 percent guys. So in terms of you know this overall 180 day four hour chart what we've been talking about over these past couple of videos is the resistance under the 180 SMA and as of right now guys <clears throat> You know, in terms of the SPX, this resistance is still intact. And we've seen it got rejected here back in the beginning of December, back in the beginning of November, and in the middle of October. On three separate occasions, we've been rejected here and we've pushed down in price. And as of now, guys, we double topped in the SPX at around 26.75. We talked about this in yesterday's video, but just to quickly recap on that right now, a double top top in any future, you know, stock, index, ETF is a bearish pattern and could indicate some downside to come, right? And on the 20-day, one-hour chart, we can see this on a closer basis, right? We topped off at 26.75. We pulled back, held that 50 SMA as a support. We pushed out of this bullish pennant right here a couple of days back, but we failed to break that 26.75 resistance, double topping here, getting rejected. We broke that 50 SMA, that support that we were just talking about. And that's, again, another big sign that we could be heading down right now in the SPX and with the trading you know with the day today being flat in terms of trading closing the day only down a mere three dollars you know this is a good sign that we are continuing to further push down and of course guys with Apple pushing up very heavily right now this could have a fluctuation on the market tomorrow as well as some other stocks that are doing well here after market hours so that's what the SPX is looking like right now guys we are still technically in that downwards trending pattern on the 184 hour chart due to us still trending below that 180 SMA so in terms of the Dow Jones guys very similar right we're trading under that 180 SMA may here on the four hour chart and on the 20 day chart we didn't double top like we did in the SPX we pushed to a higher high but the fact that we're having trouble getting above this resistance right here at around 24,600 ish right that's a good sign that we are getting rejected slowly starting to reverse and could see some more downside in the next couple of days right and of course we talked about this yesterday, but again, just to reiterate it in this video, we have a support here on the Dow Jones 
at around $24,300, which is a very critical level to keep an eye out for. And, you know, we're kind of trading in this horizontal pattern. So we're getting rejected here, like I said. And the next spot we could be headed to is that 24300 support. And if we do break that, guys, that's going to be a continuation, uh, you know, continuation pattern to the downside for the Dow Jones and the selling could start to kick in at that point, guys. So keep an eye on the $24,300 level in terms of the Dow Jones. And on this NASDAQ composite, guys, very similar to the Dow Jones. We're trading in the horizontal pattern here, but in terms of the NASDAQ, we're trading between $6,600 up to around $6,800. We saw a bearish pattern here from the double top at around $6,800. We capped out here. We broke that 50 SMA here, right, guys? We tried to push back up. Ended up getting capped out again at $6,800, forming that double top formation. And now we're trending on top of that support roughly at around $6,630. That's where we ended up getting down to today. We held above that. We can clearly see now you know, the futures are almost back up into the $6,700 range. So keep an eye, guys, on this support. If we do break the 6600 support in terms of the NASDAQ, that could be a good signal that we're, we're going down, we're selling off, and the downtrend in the NASDAQ in the overall market is continuing, guys. So in terms of the overall market right now, we're at very critical spots, you know, like we've been in over the past couple of days, right? We're at rejection zones for the SPX and the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones at a critical, you know, in a critical horizontal pattern, which is either going to push it to the upside or the downside. Same exact thing here with the NASDAQ. So keep an eye on all of these levels, guys. Super important, important in terms of the overall market. So, Let's quickly talk about Apple, guys. I know a lot of you guys want to talk about Apple. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about their earnings report. I have some notes right here on my phone that I'm just going to talk about very briefly, just really giving us a gist of their earnings report. And we're going to talk about some different products as well as some emerging markets and the performance of uh, you know Apple in China. So overall, guys, again, I'm reading off my phone here. Apple, EPS, they brought in $4.18 versus $4.17 expected by the analysts. So they beat on EPS. On revenue, they beat as well, bringing in $84.3 billion compared to $83.97 billion. And now let's break down some iPhone revenue versus the service revenue for Q1. Okay, iPhone revenue, like we expected, was down. They missed $51.98 billion versus 52.67 billion the services revenue guys which did very great from the year over year perspective today reported 10.9 billion in revenue versus 10.87 billion in revenue expected that's a 19% year over year increase in terms of the revenue and again a lot of you guys know that the services revenue the services business is one of the quickest and you know one of the biggest catalysts in Apple's business, right? It's one of the, uh, you know, the growing sectors in the business. And I think there's a lot of bright room in that business in the future, guys. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. So getting into, you know, some more product sales, some more product revenue, iPhone, 51.98 billion versus 52.67. All right, we already said that. Apple, Apple iPad was 6.73 billion in revenue versus 5.9. So iPad beat Mac also came right in line with earnings expectations, 7.42 billion versus 7.42 billion expected, and the wearables, home and accessories, 7.31 billion versus 7.33 billion estimated. So out of the main products guys, the wearables and the home and accessories business missed that's the only one that missed analyst expectations right and also iphone so ipad and mac did very well and of course services did very well compared to the iphone and compared to the wearables home and accessories so another thing i want to talk about very quickly is the loss of revenue in china guys so 13 billion dollars in revenue from china 
this quarter, which is down 27% from a year ago, guys. So this is actually huge, right? This is a big chunk of Apple's business, which is why they cut that revenue guidance about a month, a month and a half ago, whenever that was from about like 90, 95 billion. I can't remember off the top of my head, but they ended up cutting that you know, all the way down to around 85, whatever we just saw, 84 billion because of the weak Chinese economy, right? The sales are going down in China and we can clearly see that here from their earnings reports, guys, 27% hit from a year ago. That's absolutely crazy. But the good thing is there's a lot of emerging markets in terms of Apple's business, guys. I, I forget all of them, but just to name a few, Germany has been doing well. Spain has been doing very well. Those are two that I can remember off the top of my head. I just got off the earnings report call, you know, a couple of minutes ago before recording this video, and there was a lot more emerging markets. I just can't remember off the top of my head sometimes my short-term memory is crap but that is why you know I take notes while watching you know the earnings report that's the whole entire idea so you know overall guys Apple's earnings report you know it wasn't too bad right and we can see the stock right now acted very, very positively to the earnings report. We can see we closed today at around 154.68, and we're up an insane amount, guys. We literally went up $10 per share in the matter of like an hour here after market hours, right? About an hour and a half after market hours, we went all the way up to 164, and we're hovering around 163 right now, which is absolutely crazy. I did not honestly expect this move i understood that you know the revenue cut from china china sales are being down that we got from about uh the news we got about a month and a half ago i understood that that was mostly priced into the stock already meaning that you know investors the market already perceived this news and sold off their shares whatever they wanted to do and they already got it to the price where you know that news led to right for those of you guys that understand what i'm saying but I honestly didn't think it was going to fly this high after this earnings report. I honestly thought that there was a chance we were going to maybe go up a little bit in price, right, if we slightly beat. But also, I thought we could possibly sell off even more. But I did not think we were going to get up like 7% aftermarket hours. Absolutely crazy. But nonetheless, guys, you know... I've been buying Apple. It's one of my long-term positions. And, uh, you know, the fact that it's going up in price right now is very good. But the bad thing is that I can't buy any more shares now because my target was to buy more shares in the 140s. And I personally like buying dips, buying, um, you know, averaging down, cost averaging down. Very, very solid strategy for a long-term position. And, you know, the stock going up right now, that's not going to lead to me buying more shares. I'm just going to have to wait a couple more weeks, wait a couple more months, see how the stock reacts. If it ends up going back down in the next week, two weeks, who knows, guys, you know, if that ends up happening, I'm probably going to be buying more shares of Apple. But as of right now, you know, if it's hovering in the 160s, 170s, I view Apple as a hold right now, in my personal opinion, because I was buying all the way down into the 140s a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, buying more shares right now doesn't really make sense, in my personal opinion. But again, you know, it's all up to you guys. Don't buy any of these shares based on my opinion. If you want to buy Apple, go ahead, man. Go buy Apple. Don't do it on my opinion. You have to do your own research. But anyway, now that we talked about Apple for a little bit, just drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. But let's transition into what I personally traded today on the 29th. And I'm sure you guys already know this. And the people in the chat already guessed it. TVIX, guys. I traded TVIX yet again. And I traded this one earlier on in the day. I'm, I'm, I'm aware that it ended up closing the day on a pretty big downtrend. But I got in today at around $46. I believe 70 cents is when I got in. And it was around 1040 a.m. here. And we can see, you know, once I did get in on this pullback, the margin of profit opened. We held that 50 SMA for a higher low, which is what I was honestly looking to, uh, you know, looking to see before entering, right? 
this proved to be a solid, solid position. So let me just go over the technicals very quickly, why I did go um, into this position today. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 SPX. You can also use SPY because SPY is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So you can really use both of these to track TVIX. Pretty much how it works, guys, whenever the SPX, the S SPY, whenever they're going down in price, that's when TVIX is going up in price. So we can see here, you know, we ended up opening the market at around, what was it, like 20, 26.44, ended up pushing up to around 26.50, and from there, guys, we slowly started to downtrend, and what told me to get into TVIX was this pattern that I started to see right here. We can see we topped off at 26.50, and the next high topped off at around 26.45, which was a lower high from the previous right this indicates to me that the index is falling in price right it's failing to push up it's failing to push for a higher high and what really solidified it was the break below the 180 sma support from the past up uh, 20 minutes here at 1018 guys i was waiting to see if it was going to hold it here ended up not we broke below and this was a support from yesterday, right? We can see, you know, once we got that lower high in the SPX, guys, we broke that 180 SMA, and that opened up a nice chunk in TVIX. And I honestly already got into TVIX, I believe, a little bit early. I did jump the gun, which is something that I don't always do. But some days when I'm feeling a little bit more risky, guys, today was one of those days I jumped the gun, got into TVIX before the break of the 180 SMA on the SPX. But, you know, it ended up working well for me today. I got a 2.5% profit on TVIX. And again, we can see right around 1030, guys, right on the top of the uh, 180 SMA for the SPX, right? Right around this time, that is when I ended up getting into TVIX when it was holding that, um, you know, one or the 50 SMA as a support, right? I ended up getting in right around here, I believe, like 46.70 ish, and wrote it up for 2.5% profit. And we can see, guys, that was around, put me at the sell at around 47.90. So about a dollar 20 cents per share 2.5 percent increase today in terms of tvix let me know what you guys ended up trading today down below in the comment section i would love to love to know and uh that's pretty much it for my trading guys you know i'm pretty basic when it comes to trading i i stick to the same etfs i stick to the same stocks pretty much all the time right and it just works for me guys and i keep Keep working at what works for me, and I want you guys to do the same exact thing for yourselves, right? Don't just feel like, you know, you have to have a watch list of 100 stocks and you have to trade everything in that watch list because that's what people do, right? That's not really the case, right? That could work for you, but a lot of people out there, you know, they stick to a couple, let's say 5, 10, 15, like me, myself, right? They're consistent with those. They understand the patterns and they really just master trading those and they do very well at it, right? So it all depends on what you want to do, your goals, your ambitions, your trading style. It all comes down to that. So guys, that's pretty much it for, um, you know, my trading today. Nothing too crazy. Now let's go over some other stocks today that did very well, some other ETFs that did very well, and some that didn't do so well. So one I want to talk about right now is AMD, guys. AMD ended up reporting earnings. Their stock was up around 10%. I wrote a note down on AMD. Let me quickly tell you guys um, you know, what this note was. They missed on revenue, one, in terms of their earnings report, but they do expect strong sales growth in 2019. So this could be the catalyst as to why the stock ended up shooting from 1926 at close all the way up to around 2130, which is ridiculous, right? Which is absolutely ridiculous. That could be the potential catalyst to that. So if I was an AMD shareholder, I would honestly be pretty happy with the comment of strong sales growth expected 
in 2019 because that means more top line revenue. It could mean some more profit. You know, that's pretty good as a shareholder in my, um, you know, personal opinion. So AMD, guys, it looks pretty good right now, honestly, as a potential trade for tomorrow. If it continues to run, it could potentially close the gap from around 2130 to 2230. And that's kind of, you know, a big if, guys, because it's already up around 10%. So we could potentially experience a sell-off tomorrow. But let's say the hype continues into tomorrow, this stock could end up pushing back up to 22, 21, you know, 22, 22, 30. Very, very possible in my personal opinion. Another one I want to talk about today were the gold futures. These ended up playing out perfectly as to our analysis from yesterday's video. Do you guys remember I was talking about how the gold futures were trading above 1300 and keeping that old resistance? as a new support level and I literally said in yesterday's video watch out for this becoming a new support level and watch out for the push up the gap up into the 1310 1315 level and that's exactly what ended up happening guys so I'm going to be waiting to see you know tomorrow are the gold futures going to continue to push up are they going to continue this bull run that they've been in over the past couple of days or are they going to pull back opening up a nice entry point for JDST pull back and then continue the uptrend which would then open up a nice opportunity for JNUG guys so if I witness you know if I see any pullbacks tomorrow in terms of GC guys I might be entering into a JDST trade on the pullback and then of course if it finds support again Entering JNUG on the reversal to the upside. So another one that did very well today uh, for a good portion of the day today was crude oil. Crude oil went from 52 all the way up to $54, opening up a huge move today in UWT, guys. UWT closed the day yesterday at 1256 went all the way up to nearly $14. And I know a lot of you guys out there in the group chat did trade UWT, and by the way, if you guys are not yet in the Discord group chat, that link is down below. We have nearly 500 people in there talking day-to-day -day about trading stocks, news, options, you know, long-term investing, a lot of different stuff, so get in there. But anyways, UWT, very solid move today. Um, you know, from this particular ETF, we saw a little consolidation, you know, downwards move for the rest of the day, but that initial spike up was pretty significant. So another one that we've been talking about was Cron. This one had some pretty choppy trading today, guys. It went from 1950 all the way down to $17 again, and then it ended up closing the day down around $18. So very choppy trading. This could be a reversal zone, honestly, for Cron if it does end up breaking this 50 SMA on the one hour chart. So keep an eye on that, guys. Another one that did poorly today due to a um, decent earnings report. I believe they missed on revenue. Don't quote me on that, but Verizon, they reported earnings this morning and they ended up dropping like a knife, right? From $55 all the way down to 52 and they ended up consolidating for the rest of the day. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of stocks right now, guys. You know, for tomorrow, I'm going to be waiting to see, anticipating a potential market pullback. But again, guys, if Apple's push continues into tomorrow, you know, we have uh, some other big earnings later on this week. If they report green earnings, or rather good earnings that push the stock into the green, if Apple continues to push into the green, you know, this could push the entire market up tomorrow. So right now, you know, my opinion with the markets for tomorrow, it's kind of up in the air because a lot of things have to play out before I can make a sound judgment. So before I do leave you guys today for the day, tomorrow, these are the companies to keep an eye out for. Alibaba, Facebook, Microsoft, Boeing, AT&T, Tesla, McDonald's, PayPal, Visa. These are arguably, this day in particular, Wednesday, is arguably the biggest day in terms of earnings this entire week, right? We have some conglomerates here, AT&T, Boeing, Microsoft, massive, massive companies, and of course, Alibaba, the Chinese company, massive company, and Facebook, massive company. So when I'm talking about the overall market, guys, 
pushing up or down, this is what you have to keep an eye out here for. Are these companies... We're going to report good earnings and what are their stock prices going to be looking like after they report their earnings. If they're very bullish afterwards, this can send up the entire market for forewarning, right? So just letting you guys know that right now. And on Thursday, General Electric, Amazon, UPS, we have some other ones down here. And of course, on Friday, Exxon, Chevron, Merck, Honeywell, Sony, Cigna, Dominion Energy. I don't know that company, but I'm sure they have. Um, you know, a, a decent company for being on this list. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in touch with me and 500 other people, get into that Discord, guys. It's 100% free. We're talking every day about stocks, trading, investing options, long-term investing, whatever, guys. We're talking about it literally 24-7. The group has gotten to the point where everyone's super engaging, super awesome community, and we're talking nonstop throughout the day. So get in there. All the links are down below in the description box. Again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Peace out.